Hello everybody, my name is Craig Bennett and I'm the founder and owner of TechFuse Nope. And today I'm going to show you how to flash tomato USB on AUS uh, RTN66U. And as far as things goes, if I'm mispronouncing this or anything, then sorry ahead of time. But um the video I'm about to show you the where, where I'm gonna cut off to is pre-recorded. And have to do narration over it so if I missed something then sorry but pretty much all the links and whatnot is down below if you pretty much follow what I'm doing then you will be fine or you should be fine now a quick disclaimer you can brick a router and um, for what I've experienced it seemed to be actually pretty hard and I really wasn't able to brick this one even I how I treat it I should have um, Given at that, if uh, anything goes bad or good, it's all in your head. So if something goes right, then pat yourself on the back. If not, then, well, you know who to blame, which is, well, yourself. Now, if you do run into any problems, feel free to leave me a comment below, and I'll try to help you out as best I can. And, um, and hopefully this video will be able to help you out. I highly suggest that you just watch this video, get the links ready and whatnot then do it just in case of any complications which i did run into one and uh, that way if you run into any complications when you're doing it you um you be up for, all right now just download the following the firmware registration and it doesn't really matter what version you get as long as it works and also you need to download the actual tomato firmware and I suggest doing the AIO or all-in-one and that way you have everything. And once you have it downloaded, make sure that your Wi-Fi is disabled and your Ethernet port is enabled. That way when you plug in your, your stuff into the Ethernet port, your stuff can communicate. Uh, go down to properties and go down to IP4 and, and then make a static IP by doing a following. Uh, making sure that your subnet is pretty much the same as your regular subnet and then the um, Default gateway needs to be exactly what I got which is 192.168.1.1 And that way you just made a stack IP so the, the uh, that can actually see your stuff now to pause things real quick now there's several things that you need to do with your router at this point now that you got the stuff downloaded and whatnot you need to, unfortunately I didn't get a picture of this, um, but what you need to do is where I have the ethernet cable on the, the actual internet parts, you need to actually have the ethernet cable on the WAN port 1. Um, and from there, you need to actually press and hold the button between the USB and the ethernet port, which I got the thing plugged in right now. And um, when you're holding that in, turn on the power from there when remember to hold down that button from there the uh, power light on the front of the thing the area that I'm highlighting it will flash a couple times and just release that button and this will put it into recovery mode and that way your software and computer can actually see and um, just find the the firmware the tomato firmware or whatever firmware on your computer through the uh, through the, the, the stuff and uh, press upload and if the thing doesn't see it then there's a different trick and this is a pro problem that I came across a few times where the software didn't see the router. What I did and what you could do is just power off the, the thing through the button, power it back on and don't touch that button between the USB and the Ethernet but um, let it turn on like normal or whatnot and then press and hold that button and um, what will happen is your software will magically start seeing the stuff as seen so what you would do is just press the upload button after you find your stuff and the thing will do this and uh, in a couple seconds the uh, thing will pick up the router um, it took me a couple of tries to figure out this last trick, which is obviously having the thing on, then doing pressing and holding that restart button. And um, once once it detected, this happened. And uh, this takes a while to actually get through. Um, in fact, 
I think it took about five minutes, maybe 10 minutes. And there's a warning that comes up at the end. And um, th this actually messed me up a few times. But this warning, which I'm about to show you, all you have to do is just sit there and wait for your router to, to do its thing. The, the, the actual firmware process is still going on inside the router, not so much on the computer side. In fact, here it is. The um, problem right here is shown. And you just wait for your router to get done with its thing. So what will happen is once the actual process gets done, the Wi-Fi lights will start blanking and lighting up and the thing will start acting somewhat normal, but the Wi-Fi lights will start blanking and whatnot. In fact, right now, wire thing, if, if you're doing it as we speak, if you look at it, your Wi-Fi lights shouldn't be blanking it or light, lighting up at all unless it's, the process is done. And um, that, that's a thing to note is once those Wi-Fi lights start blanking, the process is pretty much done. And the only thing left to do is press and hold the WPS button for, I think, about 30 seconds or so. And release it, just time it and release that 30 seconds. And your stuff should be ready to go. Now, once you feel everything's done, just put in 192.168.1.1 while your router's connected. And uh, then what you saw should came up. And admin is password, and admin is the username. So it's pretty easy. Now, I suggest changing this, and uh, you can do this under administration, but for the most part, um, your stuff could be done right now, but I actually had to do an extra step in order to get the thing running properly. So what I had to do to get this thing running properly is I had to go down to administration and um, go down to configuration then go to the restore default and go down to erase all but in order to get the thing working i found to do this and then press ok i'm not going to do it because well i got the thing set up pretty good right now and then go down to basics and network and you'll see your wi-fi stuff what you want to do is set up your stuff as uh, if you want the dual band then what you want to do is enable both and have both of them as access points I found mobile devices smartphones and whatnot can pick up this but laptops and computers cannot pick up the 5 gigahertz uh, what, what you want to do is set the channels down to um, 56 for the 5 gigahertz and for the uh, and what I found, oddly enough, is with the 5 gigahertz, it worked as is, like with auto or whatnot. But with the uh, 2.4 gigahertz, I found that the, that didn't work with nothing. So what you have to do is put it down to channel 11, and, and that puts you at 2.462 gigahertz. And amazingly enough, that caused it to work. And uh, while my computers were able to detect the actual Wi-Fi, they weren't really able to do anything with it. And um, that's the deal with the or the um, the gigahertz and whatnot. But for the most part, that fixes the problem. Um, by default, I think this is at 40 megahertz uh, upper, and same thing that down here is 40 and upper. Um, what I suggest for security wise is put this as WPA slash PA2 uh, personal and enterprise either one but I, if you're doing this for your house just do personal it makes it a little bit easier and I suggest doing AES um, AES is strong you can do both uh, AES and TKE IP but uh, put in your password whatever you want people to sign in with and um, and you should be all right. Uh, it's just a matter of quick test and uh, you should be able to see if your things are good or not. Now this has been Craig Bennett, the founder and owner of TechViews and Up. And again, if you have any problems at all, then feel free to leave them in the comment section below or email me on techviewsnup.com and I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Now, um, again, because bricking routers is possible, 
if your router does get bricked, then it's not on the head. Now, if the router does get bricked out through the process, the uh, one thing I found, because it did accidentally brick the router during the process, um, because I didn't know what I was doing, because there's no clear guide on how to do this, at least in English. Uh, there's quite a few of them in other languages that can't read. But um, as far as this goes, it, what I found is just due to the uh, restoration process again, and um, and uh, what you do is turn on the actual power, and then hold down the 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 reset button, and that should put you back into restoration mode, and then hold down the WPS once that's done, and you should be all right. But anyways, if this video has helped you, then please like, please subscribe, and please share. Uh, again, it's not on my head if anything goes wrong, but if anything does go right, then pat yourself on the back, and um, and you know where to get me. Now, um, it, please visit techreviewsandup.com, and I uh, hope you have a great day.